All right, let's pray together before we get started with this. Lord Jesus, you are the head of the church. As declared in Colossians 1.18, and he is the head of the body of the church. As John the Baptist proclaimed in John 3.30, he must increase, but I must decrease. Lord Jesus, we did not come here to listen to a man or to be touched by a man, but we've come here to be touched by the Holy Spirit. As your word declares in 1 Corinthians 2, 2, 4, my message and my preaching were not with wisdom and persuasive words, but with demonstrations of the Spirit's power. God, let me speak your truths as coals of fire touch my lips, echoing Isaiah 6, 6, and 7. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs of the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken. Your sin is atoned. Holy Spirit, open up our ears to hear what you are declaring to the church. Revelation 2, 7 says, remind us, whoever has ears, let him hear what the Holy Spirit says to the church in these last days. In the authority of the name of Jesus, I bind every distraction and shatter every curse present in this spiritual house. As Matthew 18, 18 says, Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And as Proverbs 26, 2 says, Like fluttering sparrows or darting swallows, an undeserved curse cannot come upon you. Lastly, Lord, you promised in Matthew 8, 18, 20, for where two or three are gathered in one place, there you are in the midst of us. We invite your presence. Jesus, you're welcome in this church. Lord, walk up and down these aisles. Touch your people. Lord, before we close this prayer, we reach out by faith and cover Bishop Jimmy and Pastor Alice with the blood of Jesus. I pray, God, you surround them with favor as a shield that you go before them and that you go before them and that you're their rear guard. I thank you, God, for encouraging them in this day of ministry away from this place and that you'll bring them back to us this week safely and blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Open your Bibles if you wouldn't mind to Luke chapter 10. Today we're going to talk about uh, compassion. Often you'll see in the scripture where it says uh, Jesus was moved with compassion. Now this is not a part of this sermon, but compassion is a prelude is a precursor, it comes before oh, inakuja kabla. miracles. Miujiza. Amen. Luke chapter 10, 25 through 37, we'll be reading the story of the Good Samaritan. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? 
Jesus said to him, what is it written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered rightly, do this and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, a certain man. Now, any time that you see in the scripture where it refers to a certain man, this is not a story. There is a certain man. Kuna mtu fulani. And it's possible that this story itself was known to everybody. Na inamaanisha hii habari ilikuwa inajulikana kwa kila mtu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This prophetic word from Millicent shall come to pass. Ile neno la unabii kutoka kwa mchungaji litaweza kupita. You know one time I got one of those. Siku moja nikapata ujumbe kama huo. I I don't mean to digress. Sijastaki kuenda kinyume. Yeah, I got a note. Nikapata ujumbe kama huo. And I made the mistake of reading it. Na nikafanya makosa ya kusoma out loud. Kwa sauti. Before I read it. Kabla ya kusoma. And my head usher had sent me a message and said. Na shamanzi wangu alikuwa ametumia ujumbe akisema Dr. Ron. Yeah, kwamba your zipper is down. Ya kwamba zip yako imefunguka. Now, what did I do? Nikafanya nini? I looked down. Nikajiangalia. And it went. Na ikafunguka. Well, that began a laughing revival. Yo ile. Ianza kati wa usiku. A laughing revival. Ilikuwa ni kucheka katika ibada. I never did get that service back. Na sikupata tena ujumbe katika ibada hiyo. Everybody just stared. Kila mtu akanitazama tu. At my crotch. Katika nguo yangu. So finally I just zipped it up. Na baadaye nikaifunga tu. And that made it worse. Na ikafanya hata ikakuwa mbaya zaidi. You know the scripture teaches us humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God that it may exalt you at the proper time. Maandiko yanatuambia kwamba tunyenyekee katika mbele za macho za Bwana atatunua mwenyewe kwa wakati wake. Yeah that proper time didn't come back in that service I can tell you. Lakini wakati wake haukufika katika ibada hiyo hiyo siku. So ladies when your husband's get ready to leave the house kama wanawake kama mume wako anataka kutoka katika nyumba do him a favor mfanyie ile kazi ya ziada. Make sure his zippers up. Tafadhali tazama mwambie ako vizuri amevaa vema. Amen. Amen. All right. Where were we? I don't even where am I at? I need to look chapter. What verse was I on? A certain man. Oh, a certain man. Oh yeah. Yes. Uh a certain man. Mtu flani. Certain, certain, certain. There's a lot of certain men in here. Oh there there it is. And Jesus let me yeah start in verse 30. And Jesus answered and said a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among the thieves who stripped him of his clothing wounded him and departed leaving him half dead. Now by chance do you believe that? Do you believe in chance? Je, unaamini katika fursa ama nafasi? Ama kwa bahati? Not in my life. Sio kwa maisha yetu. Since Jesus said it, I I I believe it in this context. Ninayamini katika muktadha huu. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road and when he saw him he passed by on the other side. Likewise a Levite when he arrived came and looked but then he passed by on the other side. But then a certain Samaritan as he journeyed came where he was and when he saw him he had 
underline that in your Bible. He had compassion. Now, I'm going to define that in detail in just a minute or two, but underline that so that you can refer back to it. So this Samaritan man saw him and had compassion. So he went to him, and he bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, two full day's wages, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of this man, and whatever more you need to spend, when I come again, I will repay you. Now I'm asking this of the church. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And then it concludes, and he said, the man, the lawyer, who was trying to trap Jesus, said, he who showed mercy on him, and then Jesus said, go and do likewise. So I think we've got a good handle on how this story goes. But so, I'm now going to put it in Kenyan context. So tumeweza kupata ujumbe jinsi hiyo habari inaendelea. So nataka kukaa katika muktadha wetu wa Kenya. We're going to say that the businessman tunataka kusema wanabiashara was a kikuyu. Alikuwa mkikuyu. What? It's the truth. Anyway. And then we're going to say that the the priest, tasema ule kuhani. Uh we're going to say he's a bishop. Tuseme yeye ni askofu. Now I'm not thinking of any bishop. Asifikirie kuhusu askofu yeyote. And I don't want you to think of any bishop. Na sitaki ufikirie askofu yeyote. But when you get when I get done with this you'll see why. Lakini kimaliza utaona kwa nini. So what did the bishop do? He was on his way from Mombasa. He was going up to Nairobi for a great conference. Ule kuhani alikuwa anatoka pale Mombasa na kuja Nairobi kufanya mkutano mkubwa. And as you know, bishops are always busy. Na unajua askofu wanakuanga na shughuli mingi. Always running late. Wanakuwa kila mara wamechelewa. Always in a hurry. Kila wakati wako na haraka. Now he's in his brand new Prado. So akakutana na hii shida hapa njiani. Shiny black beautiful Prado. Oh, alikuwa na gari ile Prado. And it, notice in the story that the the bishop kwa habari pale askofu didn't even slow down. Hakupunguza hata mwendo. But I'm sure I I I have no doubt that he gave maybe a glance. Lakini najua lazima alipenyeza akatazama kidogo. He drove over to the other side of the road. Akakimbia upande mwingine wa barabara to give the man plenty of room. Na apatie ule jamaa nafasi fursa. I'm sure that he said a quick prayer. Na nikasijua maybe alifanya ombi chache. And zipped on by. Na akaendeleza mwendo. Never to think of that man again. Hakufikiria tena huyo mtu tena. Well, chasing behind the bishop was the levite na pale nyuma ya ule askofu alikuwa mlawi and we're going to call him the pastor na tutamuita mchungaji now he's driving his uh, 14 year old pro box so ana <laughs> anaendesha pro box ya miaka 10 again i'm not uh, not thinking of anybody that drives a pro box i'm just usifikirie yote ambaye anaendesha pro box <laughs> but Like most Kenyans the pastor has to get a good look see. Lakini kila wakati kama Kenya lazima mchungaji awe amekaa vizuri. So he drives over and looks out of his window down. Anaendesha anafika pale anatazama nje ya dirisha. Sees the poor man's condition. Anaona hali ya ule mtu ambaye ameumizwa. Passes back to the other side like the bishop. Anapita vinyi vya skofu alivyopita. Because he's a pastor he probably has a little bit more connection with the common guy. Kwa sababu ni yeye mchungaji maybe ako na ule uhusiano kidogo na ule mtu wa kawaida. So I'm sure his prayer was a little different than that of the bishop. So najua ombi lake lilikuwa tofauti kidogo na la askofu. He prayed in the name of Jesus. Akasema kwa jina la Yesu. Let somebody else help him. Wacha mtu mwingine pia amsaidie. And then he raced off towards Nairobi. Na akaendesha gari kuelekea Nairobi 
trying to catch his bishop. Ili aweze kuambatana na askofu wake. Now, na sasa, a Mombasa businessman. Na yule mwanabiashara wa pale Mombasa coming from Nairobi going the other way. Akitokea Nairobi akienda hiyo njia nyingine. He's a Somali. Yeye ni Msomali. Yeye ni Msomali. Is that hard to understand? A Somali. Msomali. Yeah. And uh listen, if if you're a Kikuyu businessman. Kama wewe ni Mkikuyu mwanabiashara. And your Kikuyu bishop and pastor na askofu Mkikuyu na mchungaji Mkikuyu. The bishop was Kikuyu the 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 pastor was was a Kamba. Mchungaji alikuwa mkamba. Baskofu alikuwa mkikuyu. You know if you're a kikuyu businessman you probably would have preferred Kama wewe ni mwanabiashara mkikuyu ungeamua hivi. That another kikuyu or a kamba helped you. Ni kama kwa mkikuyu mwingine ama mkamba mwingine angemsaidia. But on your list of choices on who you would like to help you. Lakini katika nafasi yako wale ambao unataka wasikusaidie Somalis would have been at the bottom. Uh, pale wa Somali wangekuwa pale mwisho. And that's the same way it reads in the Bible story. Na ni posta inasoma pale katika maandiko. You see the Samaritans were the outcasts. Wale wa Samaria ni walikuwa watu wa mataifa ambao hawajulikani. They, they were the half Walikuwa ni watu tu hawapendwi. The, the Samaritans were not in the same social circles. Ni, ni watu ambao hawako wanashirikiana na wengine as the Jews. Kama Wayahudi. And no Jew na hakuna Mwayahudi wanted a, a Samaritan to stop and help them. Hangependa kusimama ama kusaidiana na Msamaria. So let me put you in the place of the Kikuyu businessman. Wacha nikuwe katika hali ya Mkikuyu mwanabiashara. Close your eyes for a second. Funga macho yako kwa dakika kwa sekunde. Imagine you're him. Tazama ni wewe, fikiria ni wewe. You've been beaten. Umepigwa You've been stripped of all your clothes so you're laying naked on the side of the road. Umeraduliwa mavazi yako unalala uchi kando ya barabara. You're laying out there near Savo. Uko pale katika uchungu. You know that when night time comes there's a good chance that a predator is going to be coming to pay you a visit. Unajua ikifika pale usiku mambo yataharibika sana wanyama wanaweza kuja kukuandama. You've had no water. Haujakuwa na maji. Laying in that hot sun. Umekaa katika jua kali. Now everybody look at me. Na kila mtu niangalie sasa. Would you really care who brought you help? Je, utaweza kufikiria nani ambaye amekusaidia? I mean, would you Oh no, look. Uh, let, let's call his name Muhammad. Wacha tumuite huyu Msomali Muhammad. Muhammad, I appreciate you stopping but look, I, I'd rather get my help from somewhere else. Utasema asante sana Muhammad ulisimama lakini wacha mtu mwingine atanisaidia. Write this down in your notes. Andika hii katika nakala yako. The more desperate you are, kama uko katika shida kubwa, the less likely you will be concerned about who helps you. Ni usikue mtu wa kuangalia nani ambaye atanisaidia. I mean, you could be laying there. Unaweza kuwa unalala pale. And your ex-mother-in-law comes along. Na yule ambaye ni mke eh? Oh, your ex, yule mpenzi wako wa zamani anakuja. Did he get that right? Yes. Just help me out here. Oh, he did. Okay. Some of the stuff I'm telling you is hard to translate. Now, you wouldn't care. Hautajali. You would not care who helped you. Hautajali nani ambaye alikusaidia. And I did something on the other side. That no matter who helped you, you would probably be their friends, be be a friend to them until the day you die. Lazima ule ambaye alikusaidia mtakuwa marafiki mpaka ile siku ambayo utaaga. And no matter what tribe they came from. Haijalishi wametoka katika kabila gani. They would be welcome in your house at any time. Watakuwa na karibisho kwa nyumba yako kila wakati. And if the bishop that drove by, na kama askofu angepita pale, and his pastor that drove by, na kama mchungaji pia angepita pale, were at the house, na uko katika nyumba and offended because you had invited a Somali over na unasikia kwa sababu msikia ubaya kwa sababu haukumleta ule msomali pale there's a good chance that you would put out the bishop and the and the pastor kuna kuna uwezekano kwamba utawatoa askofu na mchungaji 
and keep the Somali man na uweke ule msomali as a guest in your home kama kama mgeni pale katika nyumba yako and everybody that knows that to be true say amen na kila mtu ambaye anakubaliana hiyo asema amina love penda is color blind upendo hauna hauna macho The more you see differences, unapoona utofauti, and those differences change your behavior. Na wewe utofauti unabadilisha tabia yako, the less likely you are you're walking in love. Na hiyo inamaanisha hautembei sana katika upendo. My wife is uh, besides being beautiful mke wangu yeye kando kando anakuwa mrembo kando yeye kuwa mrembo thank you she she's also a jew yeye pia ni muyahudi her mother is a full blooded jew full blooded mama yake ako na damu mara nne which makes ronda ambaye namfanya huyo ronda a daughter mwana of israel wa israeli in fact before we came to live here kabla ya kuja kuishi hapa we had been invited by the nation of israel tulikuwa tumealikwa pale taifa la israeli to return to israel kurudi pale israeli and establish our home na tuwe na makao yetu pale it's called the right of return inamaanisha haki ya kurejea and because her mother was a jew kwa sababu mama yake alikuwa muyahudi Rhonda is eligible to go live in Israel. Yeye akona kibali ya kwenda kuishi pale Israel. Rhonda is a daughter. Yeye ni binti or a princess. Ama yeye ni malkia wa Israeli. How many of you love Israel? Wangapi wanapenda Israeli? Do you know there are people in the world? Unijua kuna watu katika dunia that would rather starve to death than to receive help from a Jew there is such prejudice kuna watu kama hao in many places katika sehemu nyingi because of hatred for the Jew kwa sababu ya chuki wako naye na wayahudi we see in in the in world war 2 tunapoangalia katika vita vya mataifa ya pili how prejudice and hatred jinsi chuki can drive people to do the most awful things to people inaweza elekeza watu wafanye mambo na uharibifu mkubwa so for us in this story sisi katika uhabari huu let's settle it right now wacha tuifanye sasa hivi that we do not care hatujali who helps us mwili ambaye atatusaidia as long as god sent them kama mungu amewatuma and everybody said na kila mtu akasema amina oh i didn't tell you i should have but the, the 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 boys that beat up the the kukuyu businessman they were the gaza boys <laughs> wala ambao wale mpige ule mwanabiashara walikuwa Gaza boys. I, I left that out but they were the Gaza boys. All right. So. Now let me give you four types of compassion. Wacha nikuonyeshe huruma upendo wa huruma aina nne. Number one, ya kwanza is family compassion. Ni huruma ama upendo wa kifamilia. This I see Kenyans do very well. Hii naona wa Kenya wakifanya vizuri sana. When a family member gets in trouble, kama mtu wa familia anapata shida fulani, most often the family comes together. Kila wakati familia inakuja pamoja. Amen. Amen. I mean if someone dies, mtu akifariki, somebody's going to start a WhatsApp group. Mtu ataanzisha kikundi cha WhatsApp and we're going to try to help the family pay for the funeral. Na tutasaidia familia isimamie mazishi. How many of you know that happens every day around here? Jiwangapo wanajua inatendeka kila wakati. And I find myself doing the same thing just like you do. Trying to send something because look, nobody nobody is ready. Hakuna ambaye ako tayari for someone to die. Kwa mtu yote kufariki. Even if they're old, you're still not ready. Hata kama wamezeeka hauko tayari. Amen. Amen. 
All right, so there is a compassion that we have towards family. The other is something you see often in church, and that is called familiar. Y la baña. Now the other is la familia, which la, is the family. Y, y la familia. This is familiar compassion. That y, is y ya kujuana. the compassion you show to a neighbor that lives around you. Y ya ule na na wewe. Or each other in church. Ama wetu or people that you work with. Ama watu nao fanya nao kazi. But typically this kind of compassion is Hur when you help someone you know. And that happens in Kenya quite often. Na pia hapa Kenya kila wakati. The third kind of compassion upendo wa tatu is compassion towards a stranger. Ni ule upendo kwa ule usie mjua. This is the man, the Kukuyu businessman who is on the side of the road out there in Sultan Hamoud and he knows nobody. Ni ule, ni ule upendo ambayo ule ambayo lukwa mepigwa na kwa pale Sultan Hamoud na hajui mtu yote. Now what is the one thing that you and I hear the most often when we see a stranger get into trouble? It is, there is a, a saying that is one of the one of the sayings that I hate the most in Kenya. Hapa Kenya. And that is pole sana. Ni ile ya kusema pole sana. Pole sana. Pole sana. Turn to your neighbor and say pole sana. Geukia jina lako mwambie pole sana. Pole sana. What does that mean? What? Say say to no you're speaking to them. Pole sana. Means what? means very sorry very sorry not just sorry sana mo well, it could even be poli 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 sana i mean if you're in really bad shape kama uko katika hali mbaya they may not be saying it to your face hawako wanakuelezea katika unyuso wako but just behind you lakini nyuma yako they're saying poli 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 sana wengi wanasema hivyo now what does it mean I'm very sorry. However, I'm not sorry enough to do anything to help you. Lakini mimi sina pole sana ya kukusaidia. But I really do feel bad for you. Nisijinyaskia huzuni kukuhusu. It even says more than that. Inasema zaidi ya hiyo. It says I'm sorry this happened to you. Pole imekufanyikia hiyo. But I'm happy it didn't happen to me. Lakini nafuraha haikunitendekea mimi. Turn to your neighbor and say he is talking about the people right behind us. <laughs> you see polisana is is a way is something that we say almost automatically. And we are glad it wasn't us. Am I telling the truth here? Everybody said Kila mtu anasema pole. Come on, you wouldn't. Amen. amen. Look, if your neighbor is not saying amen, there's a problem. Kama jirani yako hasemi amina. Everybody said. Amen. Yeah, that's that. I knew that would get it. All right, now let me give you some definitions. Wacha ikupatie ufunuo flani. Pole sana is sympathy. E, kusema pole sana ni huruma tu. If feel sorry for someone. Ni kuhurumia tu mtu but not enough to do anything to help them. And it's a sense of relief that you're not the one that's suffering. Amen? Amen. Now, empathy. What does empathy mean? I'm asking you. It means being in the position on the shoe of the other person. Is there a is there a word in the in the in the in the Is there a word for that? Kuna neno kama hilo like like Kiswahili moja tu la kusema empathy. Is it? Are, are you who are you? 
Yeah, I know, but who are you? Uh, Stephen. Stephen, all right. Stephen, um, I, you're on the front row, so you must be kind of a bored, one of the wise men up here? Yeah. All right. He's one of the wise men, I think. Yes. I got the right guy. All right. So, Stephen, now I've, I've preached this message 25 times. And I, I even had a, a linguist on the front row, a guy that was a professor of English. And we couldn't think of a word either. But just giving your best shot, can you think of one word that in the common tongue for empathy? Empathy. Yeah, it's more than one. So the only way to do that is to put a couple of words together. Okay, so since there isn't one, let's just jump to that. What two words or three words would you put together to describe empathy? All right. All right, so you're putting it, but it, it actually has more than that. That's the beginning of it. There's another step. Kuna sehemu nyingine. All right. So then you have to add to the I'm in their shoes and now I feel it so strong I want to help them. Mm. Would you all agree with that? Tunakubaliana na nimeingia kwa viatu zake na pia nasikia ile ule hamu ya kumsaidia. Na hisi uchungu wake na pia niko tayari kumsaidia. Would you all agree? So what we're saying is empathy is a spiritual response to a crisis. All right, so it's a spiritual response. The, the, the polisana is a soulish response. It comes out of your brain. Your mind, your will, your emotions. But empathy is on a more fundamental level. It comes out of your spirit. In fact, your feelings could be repulsed and cause you to want to back away. Like if what you're looking at is so violent that there is extreme damage to the body. But your heart says, I need to do something anyway. Rhonda, being a police officer, during her career was, uh, uh, what, uh, you call them here detectives? Wale wajasusi. Like an investigator? Yes. She, she was a homicide detective. She, she investigated murder. Now sometimes Rhonda, even today, has trouble looking at blood. No, that's me. Uh, right, a, there she is. Now you, you look at her and you think, oh, she's the most beautiful. What, what's, what's Miss America doing at a crime scene? You better get that right. Oh, you did. Okay. So, but the fact of the matter is, she saw so much innocent blood spilled. Now she doesn't want even want to see a, a chicken die. Or a goat. Or a sheep. Anything. She has a tender heart. And I'm so thankful for that. Because most policemen that have been through what she's gone through, their heart becomes hard. And calloused. Calloused. But the Holy Ghost got a hold of Rhonda. And she has a tender heart. You know, I was a soldier. 
kama yeye kama 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 askari and I was a policeman also na kwa yeye ni askari early on ambaye yuko and I saw death na nikaona kifo in much the same way katika hiyo njia tu but when i was born again lakini nilipookoka god took out the stony heart mungu akatoa moyo wa mawe and gave me a heart of flesh na akampatia moyo wa nyama let me just say this to you wacha nikwambie hivi and since it's just us here i know you can keep a secret ye unaweza weka siri najua unaweza weka siri i'm convinced of it those of you watching by wale ambao wanatutazama at home or on on some tv or some other medium pale nyumba pale kwa facebook ama youtube ufunga mdomo If you can see bad things Kama unaweza ona mambo mabaya and it doesn't bother you na haikuumizi ama haushughuliki nayo You need to come to the altar Lazima uje katika madhabahu And you need to say God take out this this heart of stone Na waambie Mungu niondolee huyu moyo mgumu and give me a heart of flesh Na unipatie moyo wa nyama that i can feel what you feel lord na ili nihisi kila ambacho watu wanahisi amen amen when you live in kenya unapoishi hapa kenya you're around so much heartache uko katika mambo magumu sana every day kila siku you you, can, you just can't drive down the road hauwezi tuendesha gari kwa barabara hivyo without seeing people that, that need our pity kabla ya kuona watu ambao wanahitaji msaada But if we're not careful, kama hauko na hauko hauko makini, we'll find ourselves closing off our heart. Utaona moyo wako ukifungika and not letting our heart get involved. Na kufanya moyo wako usike. Now, sasa. Empathy, kuingia katika viatu za mtu ama kuhurumia mtu, which is a spiritual response. Ambacho ni hali ya kiroho inspires you. Inakutia motisha to get involved ili uweze kujihusisha in that person's story katika habari ya huyo mtu and this is where most christians in kenya na hapa ndipo wakristo wengi hapa kenya stop themselves wanajiumiza you see what i'm saying unajua kila ambacho unasema let's say you want to stop and help somebody who's uh, seriously hurt Unataka kusimama na usaidie mtu ambaye amejeruhiwa vibaya sana. But you realize that as soon as you stop, lakini una, unaona wakati ambapo unasimama, it's going to involve other people. Itahusisha watu wengine. And become complicated. Na ikuwe ni kitu ambacho sio kawaida sasa. And you're already weighing should you help or should you not help. Na unaanza kuwaza nisaidie ama nisisaidie. And many times the complication will stop you from doing anything. Na hiyo mambo mengi itakufanya sasa usiweze kusaidia. I'll give you an example. Nitakupatia mfano. I was in Kitale. Alikuwa pale Kitale. Ron and I lived there for two years. Tuliishi pale miaka miwili. And I was there to try to help build a hospital. Alikuwa akisaidia kujenga hospitali. I I had been out with a group of ministers. Alikuwa pale na wahuduma wengine. We went to some uh, regional meeting. Na tukaenda mkutano I was the guest and I spoke. Nilikuwa mimi ndio mnenaji na nikaongea. As we came back from the regional meeting, we passed this man who was laying on the side of the road. Tukampita mtu mmoja alikuwa amelala kando ya barabara. Now I had seen this man the day before. Nilikuwa nimemuona siku kabla. And this man had not moved. Na hakuwa anatembea. And I said to the driver of the probox. Nikaambia ule dereva ile probox You can get a lot of ministers in a pro box. I'm going to tell you that right now. Utafanya huduma mingi na pro box. I said stop the car. Nikamwambia simamisha gari. And he said why? Akasema kwa nini? I need to go check that man. He says no you don't. Nataka kumuona ule mtu yuko pale chini. You don't want to get involved. Hautaki kujihusisha naye. If you go check him. Ukienda kumtazama and the police find out na askari wa pa wa kupate they're going to want to ask you a bunch of questions. Watakuuliza maswali mengi sana. So you don't want to get involved. So usijihusishe. What do you think my response was? Je, unafikiria nilimjibu namna gani? Oh. Now I want to get involved. I want 
to be involved. Nataka kujihusisha. I want to hear a policeman try to tie me into this man's story in such a way that I became his problem. So askari watalishika onyeke pamoja na waseme mimi pia mimi ni shida yake ya huyu jamaa. So with the car still rolling na kama gari liko ikiendelea kusonga I opened the door nikafungua mlango and forced him to stop na nikamlazimisha akasimama got out nikatoka nje the other four guys in the car turned and looked at me wale wanne wakageuka wakanitazama and they drove off na wakaenda and i thought i can walk home nikasema sawa nitatembea tu i went over and checked this man nikaenda nikamtazama yule yule jamaa and he indeed had, was dead He was dead. Alikuwa amekufa. In fact, rigors had set in. The other thing that I noticed that, Kila kile ambacho nilitambua tena, you know, dead people start attracting flies. Wale ambao wamefariki wanavutia nzi. And I also noticed that the neighborhood dogs Na nikajua pale pila mbu zilikuwa pale were circling. Walikuwa wakimlambalamba. And if somebody had not done something, na kama mtu hangefanya kitu, He was going to be the next meal. Angekuliwa na wanyama. Of these dogs. Ya wale wanyama wale mambo. So I called the police. Nikaita askari. They came. Wakakuja. They knew who the guy was. Wakamjua yule mnani. He was an alcoholic. Alikuwa ni mtu mlevi. And they had seen him on the side of the road many times. Walikuwa wamemuona kando ya barabara siku kadha. And a couple of times a patrol or somebody had gone by and seen him there. Walikuwa wamepita pita pale wakimuona. But because he was a drunk. Kwa sababu alikuwa ni mlevi. And he had slept there many times. Alikuwa amenala pale kila wakati. They ignored him. Wakamwachilia tu. They thanked me. Wakanishukuru mimi for bringing him to their attention. Kwa kuwale kwa peltia ujumbe ya kwamba yeye hashafariki. They collected his body. Wakachukua mwili wake. His family thanked me for getting involved. Familia yake ikanishukuru kwa mimi kujihusisha. The only ones that did not thank me wale ambao hawakunishukuru were the other four preachers. Ni wale ambao wa huduma tulikuwa pamoja na wao. Now I don't know what the conversation was like in the car but I felt like they had had me for lunch and not you know uh, Ugali. Sijui walikuwa na gumzo gani kwenye gari lakini walikuwa wakipiga wakisema mambo ya kwenda kula lunch. But they did come back and they eventually picked me up. Lakini hawakukuja tena kunichukua. I think it shamed them. Ya kwamba ili 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 kuonyesha aibu. Kuwaibisha. If you if your life shames others kama ma- you're doing what is right kama maisha yako inaaibisha wengine kwa kufanya mambo vizuri then let them be shamed wacha iwaibishe last week uh, Rhonda went to the ladies oh that was she had didn't you have a good time Millie, pastor Millie, did you have a good time at that ladies meeting Mlikuwa na wakati mwema na huu mkutano huu. Rhonda, ladies if you're not involved you need to see Pastor Millie and get involved in this ladies group because it is a Giusisha na kikundi chao. I don't want to go but Rhonda really really enjoyed this. Ali alifurahia sana kuwa pale. And I encourage it. Na na it gave me an afternoon for me to meditate. Na ikanipatia nafasi nzuri ya mimi ku kukuwa peke yangu. Um, while Rhonda was at the ladies meeting alipokuwa katika mkutano ya wadada she told the pastor Alice that I was sick akaambia mchungaji Alice ya kwamba nilikuwa mgonjwa and the two of them prayed for me na wao wili wakaniombea was it the, that night I can't remember but pastor Alice mchungaji, calls me a little bit later akanipigia baadaye simu and i didn't answer na sikuweza kupokea. Kwa msiku anasikia vile. Then she calls Rhonda again. Na akapigia Rhonda tena. Checks on me again. Akanijulia hali tena. Then when Bishop got back, which is I think Monday or something. Wakati asikofa aliporejea Jumatatu. He calls me to see how I'm doing. Akanipigia kujua naendelea namna gani. You see this is the way it should be. Hivyo ndivyo inafaa iwe. We ought to care for one another. Lazima tuzingatie wengine. Even if it means inconvenience. Hata kama ni haifurahishi haipendezi. But this is just to each other as church members. Hii ni ile tu kama mshirika mwenzako. 
Don't be afraid to write yourself into someone else's story. Usikataye kujihusisha na mambo ya watu wengine. Especially if it's a stranger. Hata kama ni yule mtu ambaye haumjui Now let me give you a, a one caution here. Wacha nikupatie eh, athari moja hapa. Men, wanaume. If you have a widow that lives near you, kama uko na mjane ambaye anaishi karibu pamoja nawe and you know that she's suffering na unajua anateseka her husband is left mume wake alifariki or died alimwacha ama alifariki she has a bunch of kids ako na watoto kadha wa kadha and she's in financial trouble na ako katika hali mbaya ya kifedha you do not go visit her na hauendi kumtembelea ama usiende kumtembelea Get this one right, brother. Come, come over. Let's say this together. Yes. Men, wanaume, stay out of the widow's house. Kaa mbali na nyumba za wajane. Pastor Millie, am, am I telling the truth here? All right. Come back, come back. Say it one more time. Men, wanaume, stay out. Kaa mbali <laughs> of the widow's house. Nyumba za wajane. Nothing good is going to come of that visit. Hakuna kitu kizuri kitatokea katika ushirika ule. In fact, you might get trapped. Na unaweza patikana kwenye shida. Now I'm not saying she's a bad person. Sisemi yeye ni mtu mbaya. Maybe I am saying she's a bad person. I don't know. Naweza kuwa nasema ni mtu mbaya, sijui. You say, "Well, what do I do if I notice a widow that needs help?" Nasema nini mimi huyu mjana anahitaji msaada? Send your wife. Tuma mke wako. If you don't have a wife, kama hauna mke, send Pastor Millie or some lady from the church or a group of ladies. Tuma wanawake ama wadada katika kanisa. You can give them all the food that you wanted to give to that widow. Unaweza wapatia vyakula ama zawadi zote ulikuwa unataka kumpatia ule mjane. And they promise they will not give you credit for any of it. Na hawatatumia kwa njia nyingine ile. Cuz the last thing they need, kwa sababu kila ambacho wanahitaji Is for that widow to start chasing you. Ni yule mjane aanze kukuandama. Does this make sense? Uh, young pastors, wachungaji wadogo, do not go in a single woman's house by yourself. Usiende kwa nyumba ya mke ambaye hana bwana. Now everybody in the church say this so that they understand. Say never. Never. Go in. Go in. To a single woman's single woman's house. House. Alone. Alone. Now, never never usiende. Say this with me. Never never means never. This even goes for the teenage boys. Inaenda kwa vijana wa umri mdogo. Your girlfriend I see honey. Your girlfriend Rafiki her parents are away. Wazazi wake wameondoka. And you just want to go over and watch TV. Unataka kwenda tu pale mtazame runinga. If she's alone, kama yuko peke yake, you take your mother with you. Enda na mama yako pale. And watch all the TV you want. Na muone runinga jinsi mnavyotaka. Or take your little brother with you. Ama nenda na ndugu yako mdogo pale. But don't go in that house. Na usiende pale unless you want to ruin your reputation. Ama utaharibu eh, nafsi yako. And hers as well. Na pia ya ule mwingine. Does this make sense to you? Je, hii inaleta maana kwenu? You can tell I'm at my home church. Unasema hapa ni sio kanisa yangu hiyo. I'm talking very plain. Naongea tu kwa ukweli. But it's just us. Lakini ni sisi tu. Nobody's going to tell anyone. Hakuna mtataambia mwingine. Those watching, they've already forgotten it. Wale ambao wanatazama watasahau. Lastly, ya mwisho. I want you to turn in your Bible. Nataka ufungue Biblia yako. To the book of Proverbs. Katika kitabu cha Midali. Proverbs 19 and verse 
Medali 19 mstari wa 17. Now this is probably the most important scripture of this entire message. Huu ni ujumbe wa maana sana katika hii ni maandiko ya maana sana katika ujumbe huu. If you've been sleeping through the entire sermon, kama uliko melala kwa ibada nzima, you want to wake up for this one. Amuka kwa ajili ya hii. I'm going to teach you through this one verse. Nataka kufunza katika andiko hili moja. How to cover yourself jinsi ya kujifunika in your times of trouble. Kwa wakati wa shida. Let's read this together. Tusome pamoja. Psalm 119. Can you give me another version like the New English version or the New Living version or something something other than the NIV? All right, read this one out loud. If you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord and he will repay you. Now, notice this. Tazama hii. If you help poor people, unaposaidia maskini, are you expecting that the poor can pay you back? Je, unatarajia yule maskini atakulipa? No. Hapana. Don't ever give to someone and expect that they're going to repay you. Usimpatie mtu kitu na utarajia atakulipa. That's just being a broker. Wewe unakuwa tu broker. It's funny. Come come here we got to connect again. Say that's just being a broker. Hiyo ni kwewe kuwa tu broker. It's true. Put it back up. Now notice this. Go back. New Living Translation. Let's read this together. If you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord. Now, how many of you have ever done one of these Felizi loans? What is it? Hmm? Feluzi. Feliza. Felizi. Felizi. Felizi, Felizi, what, which, what is it called? It's a loan through your phone. What do you call that? Feliza. Feliza. Yes. How many of you have ever done one? Of, well, you probably don't want to say. Has, has everybody done that before? Feliza. Let me see your hand if you've done that yes. before. I don't even know what it is. I, I can tell you I've not. <laughs> but I had someone that owed me uh, some money. And they said they would repay me as soon as they got paid. But lakini, they forgot that they had used their phone for a Feluzi loan. So I'm standing with them expecting that I'm going to get my 10 grand. And when they looked, when it was transferred to them, this is what I heard. Oh! Do you, do you know, I, 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 can't, I don't know how to translate that, but it seems to work in any language. Oh! The eyes went, oh! And I said, okay. I said, uh, I had done a Feluzi loan. Alone. And they take it as soon as you get it. They don't ask you. They don't get permission. And I said, now maybe I'm slow. I do have two doctorates, but I'm a little slow here. How does that affect me? <laughs> You're not getting your money. Because Safaricom got theirs first. Hautapata pesa kwa sababu Safaricom walichukua yao kwanza. Look. There is no other opportunity. Hakuna nafasi nyingine in the Bible katika Biblia for you to do something. Yawe kufanya kitu that indebts God to you. 
kile ambacho kinafanya Mungu awe na deni yako. Now look, even people that have half a brain. Hata watu ambao wako na akili nusu. What was that? Do they, do they get it? All right, half a brain. Wale ambao wako na akili pungwani ama akili nusu. They they realize wanafahamu Well, maybe they don't. Do you guys have the saying you can't get blood out of a turnip? Do you know what that means? Ah, forget it. Look, people with half a brain, what to ambao kwa akili pungwani? Understand how important it is to tithe wanaelewa maana ya kutoa fungu la kumi. because when you tithe kwa sababu unapotoa fungu when you take care of god's business unaposhughulikia biashara ya mungu god will take care of your business mungu atashughulikia biashara yako when you take care of god's man unaposhughulikia watu wa mungu he'll take care of you atakushughulikia pia wewe that's not a loan hiyo sio kuchukua loni that is called reciprocity. Hiyo inamaanisha ni kufanya tu biashara. The church benefits and you benefit. Ya kwamba kanisa inafanya shughuli zao na wewe pia unapata mazao yako. A reciprocal agreement works that way. Kila kitu ambacho kinakubaliana kinafanya namna hivyo. Lending to the poor ukipatia maskini is not reciprocal. Hiyo sio ya kujirudishia hapana. It is a debt. Hiyo ni deni. And I promise you that when you get to heaven na unapoenda pale mbinguni you will not be telling God hautakunaambia Mungu you didn't pay me back haukunilipa I helped all these poor people nimesaidia hao watu wote maskini and you never paid me back na haukunilipa No I think when you get to heaven najua ukinapofika pale mbinguni He'll say not only did I pay you back. Tasema siku kulipa tu. I gave you the best interest. Nilikupatia pia na faida juu yake. Now, if you want to protect yourself, unapo ukitaka kujilinda wewe mwenyewe against future catastrophic events. Katika mambo ambayo yatatokea shida ambayo yatatokea usoni. Those events that you cannot predict for yourself. Wale matukio ambayo hauwezi zuia wewe mwenyewe. Start helping the poor now. Anza kusaidia maskini sasa. You understand me? Unaelewa hiyo? Now I've got much more I can teach you on this. Niko na mambo mengi naweza fundisha kuhusu hii. But I'm not going to today. Lakini sitaweza kufanya hivyo. But I want you to start Lakini ninataka uanze helping the poor. Kusaidia maskini. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads. Inamisha vichwa vyenu. Pastor. Mchungaji Forgive me for going over the time limit. But I felt like we needed to bring this message to a complete close. So I extend you my uh, I'm sorry. I went too far. But let me, before I go, let me use my faith. To pray for a blessing for you. Kunena baraka kwako. So for with every head bowed and every eye closed. If you need God to soften your heart. Ukitaka Mungu ayeyushe moyo wako. Which has become hardened. Ambao umekuwa mgumu over time. Kwa muda. And it's easier for you now than it's ever been. Na ni rahisi sasa kwako kabla ya pale mwanzo to fall into the trap kujipatikanya kwenye shida of saying poly sana na kusema pole sana but having nothing lakini kuwa na katika hali ambayo huwezi saidia in your hand katika mkono wako if that's you kama huyo ni wewe i want you to stand to your feet for this prayer nataka uweke imani yako katika ombi hili Is there one honest person at Zimmerman? 
kuna mtu yote ambaye ana hakika moyoni mwake would say god i need my heart softened kamba mungu ningependa moyo wangu uyeyushwe i need to be able to notice ningependa niweze kujua those who are hurting wala ambao wanaumiza and not drive by them na nisiwapite tu wana ambao wanateseka or just say police on ama kuambia tu pole i have to, i have to tell you uh, there are three people standing in here sasa nikwambie kuna watu ambao wamesimama watu wa lakini nafaa tu kuwe tunasimama watu zaidi ya 300 Look the Bible says judge yourself that you be not judged. Biblia inasema jihukumu wewe mwenyewe ili usihukumiwe. Now what you're telling me is that you're above this. Kila macho unaniambia ni kwamba wewe ni zaidi ya hii. But if you don't judge yourself, lakini usipojihukumu wewe. And admit that you have a hard heart. Na unajua kwamba uko na moyo mgumu. You may find yourself going through a few circumstances. Utajipata ukipitia hali fulani. To remind you. Kukukumbusha Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you at the proper time. Ya kwamba unyenyekee mbele za Bwana na ataweza kukuinua kwa kuwa. Make this plea one more time. Nitaomfanya ombi hili tena. If you're sitting here, kama umeketi pale, and it's been your habit to say pole sana. Na imekuwa ni tabia yako ya kusema tu pole. And have nothing in your hands. Na haujakuwa na kitu ya kusaidia. I want you to stand up. Ningependa usimame. Stand up. Young and old. Christian non-Christian board member Sunday school teacher Haijalishi wewe ni nani mtasimama tu stand up We have 30 seconds stand up if you know that you need God to touch your heart Ungetaka kujua Mungu aguse moyo wako And you want to be used by God to be a blessing to others Ungetaka kutumika na Mungu uwe baraka kwa wengine And you're willing to tell God look God I'm willing to to let you use me Na uko tayari kuambia Mungu niko tayari kukuacha unitumie To be a blessing to those who cannot do anything for me Kukuwa baraka kwa wale ambao hawawezi fanya kitu kwangu And I believe that if I do that Na nami ninapofanya hiyo That one day when I get myself in trouble Kwa kwamba siku moja ningejipata kwenye shida And I desperately need help Ambao ninahitaji msaada sana That you will take care of me Kwa kwamba utanishughulikia And make sure Na kuhakikisha that what i have given Kwa kwamba ninapokuwa nimetoa comes back to me Itarudia pia mimi with interest Na faida I'm going to give you Lord the Feluzi loan. Ninaweza kupeana hiyo yote ya fuliza. And you can pay me back. Na unaweza nirejeshea tena. When you get the chance. Unapopata nafasi. 10 9 8 Who else needs to stand? Quickly stand. Yote ambaye anahitaji kusimama. God use you. Na wacha Mungu akutumie. 5 4 3 2 Now those that are standing lift up both hands. Wale ambao wamesimama inue mkononi miwili. And pray this prayer. Na ufanye ombi hili. Heavenly Father. Baba yetu abiguni. Everybody pray this prayer. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I come to you in the name of Jesus. I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask that you forgive me. I ask that you forgive. Of all my sin. Of all my sins. Especially especially hardening my heart hardening my heart to the needs of others the needs of others lord give me a heart of flesh god give me a heart of flesh give me a tender heart give me a tender heart i ask you lord jesus i ask you lord jesus to use me to use me to be your hand extended to be your hand extended use me use me to be the encouragement to be the encouragement to those who are in desperate places those who are in desperate places I receive now I receive now the grace of God the grace of God I receive now I receive now the mercy of God the mercy of God which is God rescuing me which is God rescuing me out of my troubles out of my troubles even if I have created them even if I have created them now lord because I'm a recipient because lord i'm a recipient of grace and mercy of grace and mercy then i have a right 
Then I have a right to share grace and mercy to share grace and mercy with others. With others. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For the supernatural work. For the supernatural work that you're doing in my life. That you're doing in my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.